Yo, 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 this video is all about the cycle of thirds. Now, you may not have heard of the cycle of thirds. More than likely, you have heard of the cycle of fifth and maybe even the cycle of fourth. But chances are, you might not have encountered the cycle of thirds. Once you know the cycle of thirds, it enables you to build your triads and know which notes are within those triads. But what's more, it's super useful for knowing how to build those triads into seven 7th chords, 9th chords, 11th chords, 13th chords. So if you've ever seen a chord with a name like this and you wondered what the hell is that about, then this is the video for you. As ever, I have a cool mnemonic that will help you to remember this cycle of thirds and you will use it forever. Let's crack on. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the letter E in the musical alphabet. So essentially, I'm going A, B, C, D, E. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this cycle of thirds. Now, when I say cycle of thirds here, I'm talking about the notes from C major. Watch this. So I start on an E. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the notes in the C major scale, starting from E sequentially. You could do this in C. You may even come up with a new mnemonic, but this one is super useful because it ties into how to write notes on all the staves at the same time. One mnemonic to rule them all. So I take the E, and if we think about it, the next note is F. And then after F, we get G. And when I mean a third, I mean we're moving in three notes. So if I go E, F, G, that's a distance or an interval of three notes, that three note interval. Now, whether this is a major third or a minor third is inconsequential. We just want to remember this mnemonic. I'm going to carry on. When we hit the end of the G, we go back to the beginning of the musical alphabet. So this is going to be A. Then we get B. And you can see what's happened is we get the B there and we're jumping over in three. That's three there, there's three there. If we take this B, and we move on, we get C, then we get D. After D, we get E, then we get F. Then we get G, then we get A. Then we get B, then we get C, then D. And then you can see that what happens is we get back to the E again there. And that's a beautiful thing. So always jumping up in three. By jumping up in three, that means we get all the way around. Worth noting is, if I start on the A here, you can see essentially the musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So essentially we've gone around that, that's actually the natural minor scale. If we wanted to come from the C, we could go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that would be the C major scale. Now, why is this important? The reason it's important is because all the chords from the key of C major are derived from this sequence. Here, let's just have a look. What we could do is we could take the musical notes that are in the circles. We're going to take those and we're going to put them into a sequence. And that sequence goes E, G, B, D, F, A, C. E, G, B, D, F, A, C. We need a handy way to remember this and what we're going to do is we're going to create a mnemonic. And the mnemonic we're going to get is every good band deserves fans and cash. What we need to do is highlight each of the first letters here. Every good band deserves fans and cash. Every good band deserves fans and cash. If we remember that mnemonic there, then that's going to tell us the sequence of the cycle of thirds. Let's see how useful this is. If I want to know what notes are in the chord of C major, and if you remember that triads specifically are made of stacked thirds, we can see that the root of C is going to be C. But by skipping over to this E here, that will be the third of the chord of C major. And jumping over again, you can see I can pick up the fifth of that. 
So just by highlighting that, I can figure out that C, E and G are the notes of the C major chord. But what if you want to take that further? What about the seventh of the chord? All I need to do is keep going round the cycle of thirds and that gives me the seventh. That tells me that the B there is the seventh of the chord of C major in the key of C. How about the ninth? I just keep going. There's the ninth. What about the eleventh? What about the thirteenth? Are you getting the picture of how this works now? I'm not saying that these chords are going to sound great because the fact of the matter is, is that this C major chord that we started out with has become a C major 13 chord and that includes all the notes of the C major scale, including the tensions and that will make a chord sound pretty disgusting. But hey, some people like funky sounding chords. So what I've done here to save some time is I've written that mnemonic down the side here. Every good band deserves fans and cash. I've also written it here, E-G-B-D-F-A-C. Every good band deserves fans and cash. That's all you have to remember, guys. Just say that. Keep saying it over and over again. Say it, mutter it when you're in the supermarket, when you're paying the cashier. Every good band deserves fans and cash, because every good band does deserve fans and cash. I want to show you the practical application of this. Here we have the key of C major. And you can see I've written out the chords. We've got a C major, D minor, E minor, an F, a G, an A minor, and the B diminished chord. Now those seven chords are the chords of the key of C major. They are the family of chords that all work together. Using the cycle of thirds, what we can do is we can figure this out. And like when I say it's a cycle, when we get to E, G, B, D, F, A, C, what happens is we just go back to the beginning of the mnemonic there. Now, if I take this C chord, it starts on a C like I demonstrated before. And if you remember, what happened is when we went along the mnemonic C, E, G, that showed us the notes within that chord. And what we end up with there is the root, the third and the fifth of the chord. And that makes the triad. I'm gonna do this as a table there for you guys. And that gives us a chord of C major. If we look at a D minor chord, I'm gonna wallop a D there. If we remember the sequence and use the sequence there to help us, you can see that we get D, then we get an F, which is the third of the chord, and then we get an A. That demonstrates and shows us the notes that are in the D minor chord. Let's continue and we'll carry on. The next note we're gonna pick on is the E. If we take that E, we're going to get E, G, B. Every good band. It makes sense because we're always jumping in at the mnemonic somewhere. E, G, B. If we take the next chord along, we have the F major chord. Well, look, fans and cash. That's the root third and fifth of the chord F. What's the next chord? The next chord is a G major. The G major chord is good band deserves. G, B, D. The chord after that, chord six. Here we have this A minor. The A minor chord goes A, C. We skip back round to the beginning. It's going to give us A, C and E. And then last but not least, we're going to do this odd chord, which is this B diminished chord. We're not too Worried about that? I have some cool videos lined up uh, about diminished chords. We start there, you can see that we get a B, a D and an F. And those are the notes that make up those chords. E minor, F, G, A minor and a B diminished. Just by using every good band deserves fans and cash as our mnemonic, it helps us to work out what the root third and fifth is of all the major, minor and that last diminished chord in the key of C. This works with all keys. All you have to do is add the relevant sharps or flats. In fact, let's do a key now. So to further delve into this, we're going to do another key. And the key we're going to choose is a key with one sharp, and that is the key of G major. Without getting too much in depth in this video about why that sharp is there, I just need to show you how I amend that to my original mnemonic. It's very simple. Here I go. I just add a sharp. That means when I write out the key here, I can see how that is going to change all the voices of the chords. And I just need to add 
that sharp every time an F comes up. Here's the key of G. We've got the root third and fifth table here. It's just useful to help us to be able to see what's going on here. There's the G chord. And with that, we get good band deserves. The chords in the key always follow the same order. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. There's a reason for that and we'll get into that in another video. In the meantime, let's crack on with this bad boy. This gives us the chord G, which is the one chord of the key of G. That's going to be major. The key's major. The next note in the G major scale is an A. And actually, I could cheat with this and just write the whole of the G major scale down here like this. Okay, so I've written it down there, but there's something missing. I need to put the F in, and that gives me an F sharp. Now, here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to add the notes by using the mnemonic. We're starting with an A. What do we get? And cash every. So, you can see this chord here. This is a minor chord. It's going to give us an A minor chord. The next chord is B, D, F sharp. We can't forget that sharp there. Band deserves fans. But what we do is we just add that sharp to the mix. The next note, C, E, G. This gives us a C chord. The next chord we're going to get is a D, an F sharp and an A. That D, F sharp and, and an A gives us a D major chord. Next we get every good band. That gives us an E minor chord. And last but not least, on this F sharp we get F sharp, A, C. That gives us fans and cash. I'm not doing anything special to modify that F. I'm still thinking of it as a an F. In fact, if this was a flat key, I would use exactly the same process to work out the notes of each of the chords. This happens to be F sharp diminished. How about demonstrating it in a flat key? For the key of G, I had an F sharp. If I'm going to do a flat key, I need to change that. I've got rid of that now, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the key of F, which has one flat, which is B flat. There. That's how easy it is. I've just amended that to that. So now it goes, every good band deserves fans and cash, but the B has a flat. We just have to remember to include that. Let's work out the chords. Here's the chord table for the root third and fifth. Okay, so we're in the key of F. So we're going to start on the letter F, which is now a natural note. We now have an F instead of an F sharp. Make sure you do that, otherwise you will confuse yourself. But we have this B flat. This means that this chord is fans and cash. The next chord, well, what comes after F? And it is G. And we get G, B, D. Good band deserves. But what we have to remember is to amend that B with a flat. The next chord is going to start on an A. And we can see that it goes A, C, an E. The next chord starts on the B, but it's band deserves fans. Let's amend that B. The next chord is going to be F, G, A, B, C. In fact, shall I just fill those out? C, D, E. We don't need F because we've already got it at the top. C, cash, every good. D, deserves fans and. And then we go E, G, B flat. So all in all, if I add up these chords, remember the sequence that I said for the chords in the key is major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. This is an F. This is a G minor. This is an A minor. This is a B flat major chord. This is a C major chord. This is D minor. And this is E diminished. So guys, Hopefully you can see this is a super useful way to help you to know the notes that make up your chords that you are playing every day. It doesn't matter which chords you're playing, they all follow this cycle of thirds unless you're doing some crazy jazz quartal secundal stuff. Once you've got the hang of this, I'll be posting another video which talks about using this mnemonic as a way of navigating all the clefs, treble clef, bass clef, tenor clef, all the awkward clefts, there's only one mnemonic to rule them all. Until next time, see they.